Now that's just another groove to kickstart your morning. That's right. Good morning, Fiji. It's Gold FM bringing you the classic hits to fine tune your morning. And Fila still trying to fine tune her voice. And as always, Pedali still trying to wake up. Now this is where you'll find us every morning from Monday to Friday. On daybreak with Pedali and Fina from 6 to 9. Join, Join us. जहा हो प्यार का बसेरा और रिश्तों की खुशबू वो है आपका अपना घर संसार ज्वाइन बी ऑन घर संसार मंडे टू फ्राइडे नाइन एम टू ट्वेल्व पी एम ओनली ऑन रेडियो फीजी टू Headlines, duo face court for allegedly defrauding education ministry of about $60,000. NFA proposes the criminalization of unnecessary fires. And there's still a lot more opportunities for Fiji-China trade. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and you're watching FBC News. Josiah Mbainivalu and Kini Vowailenati appeared in the Super Magistrate's Court this afternoon charged with allegedly defrauding the education ministry of close to $60,000. It's alleged by Nivalu, a former clerical officer with the Ministry of Education, raised false vouchers together with bus fare ticket summaries under Lenati's name, claiming the 27-year-old was providing transport for students of a primary school. Bainivalu allegedly raised 43 check payments, amounting to over $59,000, drawn from the Permanent Secretary of Education's drawings account. It's alleged they spent about $30,000 of that on groceries. Bainivalu pleaded guilty to all counts, while Lenati pleaded not guilty. They reappear in court on the 9th of next month for bail application and hearing. Three weeks after the Auckland-based company Blacktop Construction Limited went into receivership, and the Fiji Roads Authority is still trying to resolve the issue. The company was contracted for roadworks in the Northern Division. Mikalonga reports. Of, of problems with it. Neil Cook says the FRA has put the appropriate level of scrutiny into every contractor awards, but there's still room for improvement. These things can happen very, very quickly, and it's not strictly about what's happening in Fiji. Um, the, the world market can, can do all sorts of strange things in, in different areas. The FRA chief says it's extremely unfortunate for Blacktop Construction to go into receivership. He says the FRA, with its contingency plans, was ready to respond and has ensured the smooth flow of road construction in the north. Our second focus is the, is the unsecured creditors here in Fiji. At government's request, I'm, I am preparing a proposal for consideration that will bring some relief to those unsecured creditors in Fiji. The FRA has surely learned a lesson from the incident and is still in its early days of managing its way around the situation. There's a, there's a range of things we have to look at on this, you know, and I think lessons learned can, uh, can wait until, until we've uh, you know, resolved the situation to our satisfaction. FRA remains confident of the future. Mikolonga, FBC News. There are plans to criminalise the burning of bush, rubbish and grass in Fiji. Due to the recent increase in bushfires, the National Fire Authority is now proposing a new system where a permit will be needed to light fires. Akosi Tatale has more. NFA is looking at ways to improve its services, and one of it is to take action against those that light unnecessary fires. However, this is still being reviewed and will be finalized by the end of next month. The thinking behind the permit is just to make NFA aware that uh, you know you want to start a fire in this area and we will then assess the risks eh, around the area and advise you accordingly on, in terms of whether it's safe or unsafe to do so. NFA is also looking to adopt different legislations from various countries on what best suits Fiji. We're also looking at uh, Malaysia, Singapore eh, and uh, Indonesia, uh, UK and the USA eh, and trying to uh, see what are the best provisions for NFA eh, as a whole in terms of our of our, uh, the services that we provide. The review is ongoing and public submissions will be open until the 31st of October. Uh, we will uh, plan for public consultation eh, towards the end of October. Just to go around and collect and gather opinion 
uh, feedback from the members of the community in terms of fire permit, eh? what is the best option for Fiji and so forth. Eh? So at the moment we cannot uh, really say whether there will be a provision. The NFA has attended to 500 bush, rubbish and grass fires from January to August this year. 199 in August alone. Akusi Tatale, FBC News. The Chinese government has provided a $9.3 million grant to ensure the completion of the Raiwai Flats. Work by China Railway 1 came to a standstill after government realized that the $9 million contract signed with the company was not enough. Negotiations with the Chinese government have confirmed the deal and work is expected to resume soon. The government had initially taken out a $20 million soft loan from China for the Raiwai and Raiwanga housing projects. Work went ahead, but because of the rising costs and issues related to the project, more money was needed. And because we didn't have the money and it was a Chinese government loan, uh, we couldn't change that contract of $9 million. But what the, the government of China did was, was pay the remainder of the funds. So they gave us the additional funds to get to the $18 million and complete the project. Colonel Moses Tiguitonga says this signing is a first for the country. It's a very historical location. Uh, we've never had grants from, uh, from uh, our partners overseas, but China being the friendliest uh, uh, partner for Fiji and whose uh, insistence on ensuring that we maintain our, our integrity on the project has approved a grant of 9.3 million to complete uh, this railway project. Work resumes this week and is expected to be completed by August next year. Vusita Kotimaswasa, FBC News. There will soon be an extensive survey of the broadcasting sector. The Department of Communications is calling for expressions of interest from market research companies to conduct the listenership and viewership survey. The survey will cover areas such as radio and television penetration rates, market share of different broadcasters, and audience preferences on programming. In an advertisement, Minister for Communications Aisaid Kayum said it is important for the government to have critical industry and baseline data that would guide its further policies for the broadcasting sector. Fiji needs to step up its promotions in China in order to increase exports to the Asian market. A recent Pacific media delegation to China was told that very few people there know about Fiji and its products, and this is unlikely to change without more exposure. Edwin Nunn reports. Fiji's exports to China are mainly made up of agro-produce, fisheries and some handmade art and craft which are popular. There is a lot of room for growth. For the Chinese people, they do not know Fiji. They don't know what products you have. If they say America, the neighboring countries like Japan, Korea, and the ASEAN, they all know. But if they say from Fiji, they only know maybe Fiji is beautiful. It's a place for travel, to relax, but they do not know uh, what kind of products you have. As the Deputy Director General at the Ministry of Commerce, Bang Kui Chen is able to see where the gaps are and what needs to be done. We need quite a lot of promotions from either the Fiji side or from the Chinese side, uh, especially by the government, uh, because we have quite a lot of, uh, 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 we we'll call it exhibitions <coughs> or trip fairs or expos or uh, seminars here in China. We do welcome uh, the business people from Fiji or from other Pacific Island countries. Next month, an economic forum is being held in China, specifically designed for the Pacific. Fiji and neighboring islands are expected to send large delegations. We do wish your people come over to China more and more to join us for the seminars, for the expos, for the trip fairs. We invite you to come. And also, uh, it's also the responsibility of my government to try to uh, educate to let my uh, business people to know about Fiji. This kind of people-to-people -people contacts is very important. And I think this is the uh, important way for people, for business people to understand each other so that we can import more from you. With the world's largest population, China offers a never-ending demand for a wide variety of products 
beckoning to Fiji to grab its share of the market. Edwin Nand, FBC News. Just ahead, Vodafone Fiji marks 20 years of existence. Isambul binaka. Pedang gawa di sorin dalai. Nama kiri mana wasi nengono borota kena lali nekabi. Maina tolu kena bitu. Ena moni dingin apa rombuka. Ena bola FM. Naban dua ena serre. Welcome back. You're watching FBC News. A 27-year-old Chinese national has been charged for allegedly failing to declare foreign currency when she arrived in the country. The accused was arrested at Nandi Airport last Friday when authorities found U.S. $80,000 in her baggage. She was produced in the Nandi Magistrate's Court today and granted bail by Magistrate Penindali Tuivama. There is a stop departure order and her travel documents have been seized. She has been referred to the Legal Aid Commission to get legal advice. The suspect will reappear in court tomorrow when she is expected to take a plea. Vodafone Fiji Limited today celebrates its 20th anniversary. A luncheon was held at the very place the idea was born, at the Holiday Inn in Suva, honoring the few who started what is now one of the biggest and most successful companies in the country. Ritika Pratap reports. 20 years ago, the idea to start Vodafone Fiji Services was born. And for the few who were at the forefront of its humble beginnings, they could never be more proud. The projection of 1,000 customers a year. And look at where we are now. And it's become a, a sort of standard. You go to the markets, the ladies were selling down or budge or whatever. Many of them would have a telephone for convenience. Vodafone Fiji now has 23 outlets countrywide employing more than 200 staff. And for one man, heading the company for the very start is a task he's never regretted. One of the key attributes of Vodafone's success was his board. We had a very strong board, the board backed the management, and we went from strength to strength. And that was actually our, our biggest uh, our plus. Aslam Khan has attributed the success of Vodafone Fiji to the people. He says are critical to its everyday running. The success of uh, any managing director actually is his team. And I'm uh, glad to say that my 200 plus employees are the best thing I ever have. They are, they are really passionate about what they do, they love their customers, and they deal the results. And that's what matters. Also present at today's lunch was Lionel Yi, who more or less peer-headed Vodafone Fiji to what it is today, having chaired the board for 18 years. This time, 20 years ago, this company was actually formed. And it was uh, Ronaldo Grimombo and Lan Li, two gentlemen who basically saw through this last 20 years. Vodafone Fiji continues its dominance in the country and while it acknowledges its competitors, it's given its assurances that it will provide the best services to its customers. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. A military officer assigned to work with the Immigration Department has been charged with two counts of bribery. Chone Senimbivi of Vatuanga Suva allegedly received a silver and gold plated watch and $100 from Yong Pen on June 28th this year. He's been charged by FICAC and appeared in the Suva Magistrate's Court today. He was released on bail for the sum of $500 and will reappear in court on the 21st of next month. The Chinese company contracted to build the mini hydropower plant in Somosomo Taviuni has identified the project site. Officials from the company, along with government officials, recently undertook a joint inspection trip to Somosomo. Ellen Otorangai View has more. The construction team from Honan Construction Engineering Group in China has identified the suitable piece of land to build the mini hydro. The construction team uh, have, uh, have chosen a location for both eh? the dam sites and the powerhouse site. And uh, from now on, uh, the, the, the scope of the works that, uh, uh, that the government of Fiji is. Um, to undertake is, uh, is a bit clearer. There are some technical issues which have to be addressed before the project gets off the ground. Now, this is with regards to the, the design, like I mentioned, it is a preliminary design. Eh? Uh, we are in the stages of finalizing both of uh, the design. The Chinese contractor is ready to begin work. However, there are some aspects of the contract agreement that the Fiji government has to fulfill first. There's a uh, range from um, the completion of the lease agreements uh, with the landowners here in Tavuni. There is also things like uh, road access. We have to complete this um, 
and uh, the leveling of uh, the main uh, construction areas. Eh? 16 months from the construction date, the whole of Tavuni is expected to receive the electricity supply. We, the people of Tavuni, really want electricity because along with it comes development in all areas like education. The project has received the endorsement of the Tuidakau Ratunenga Malalambalabu. Eleanor Turangaviu, FBC News. And Jamie joins us now with a new week of sports. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening. Up ahead, we take a look at how the recent changes at Rugby House is giving off some positive vibes and coach Ben Ryan to play observer at this weekend's Fiji Water International Sevens. Stay with us for the details. Bula, I'm Wame. Join me every weekday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on The Center Show with classic hits from the 70s as well as the 80s right here on Gold FM. सूरज की पहली किरण के साथ दिन की शुरुआत कीजिए सुबह का मंगल प्रभात आपको शुभ हो सुबह सुबह हो खुशियों का मेला ना लोगों की परवाह ना दुनिया का झमेला पंछियों का संगीत हो और मौसम अलबेला मुबारक हो आपको ये खूबसूरत सवेरा हर सोमवार से लेकर शुक्रवार तक सुबह छह से लेकर नौ बजे तक शामिल रहे रेडियो फिजिटो आरोप हम सफर में रविंद सिंह के साथ Welcome back to FBC Sports. The Digicel Fiji 7 side will get their first asset test this week at the Fiji Water Centennial International 7 tournament. Coach Ben Ryan is expected to play an observation role with the squad still under the guidance of his predecessor. Talin Dalvakadaka reports. This weekend's Fiji Water International 7 will be a big break for some members of our Digicel Fiji 7 team. 23 year old halfback Kelepi Namoua made his debut in the recent Pacific Mini Games and is excited to play on home soil. Yeah, I'm feeling proud to play in front of my home crowd this week. Meanwhile, with coach Ben Ryan yet to arrive in the country, his predecessor has been handling the reins. Ryan will take a backseat role during the two-day tournament to scrutinize the players. Well, at the moment, uh, Ali Ferret Indere will be in charge before the arrival of uh, Ben Ryan, as uh, it had been agreed, uh, so Alfred in there is uh, mapping out some strategy that will help them for the ocean here and uh, while uh, Mike doing some of, uh, observation before he gel in with uh, the culture and how the seven teams have been operated in Fiji. The 12-member squad shifts camp from Queen Elizabeth Barracks in Nambua to Novotel Hotel in Lamy tomorrow in the lead-up to this weekend's tournament. Thailand or the Kazakh? FBC Sports. The current clean-out process at Rugby House is beginning to spark some sponsorship interest again for Fiji Rugby, with a new board already showing the exit door to two senior staff and a few more expected to face the chopping block. There's now a newfound confidence at Gordon Street. Elena McDonald spoke to the FRU chairman, who is optimistic about the sport's future. The Flying Fijians. Sevens Rugby. Schools and women's national teams will be FRU's hard cells once a strong administrative team is formed. The onus is on us to put the house in order first, uh, clean up uh, FRU, uh, put our, our financials in, in, in uh, at least a better standing than where it was. FRU hasn't had a sponsor for a few years now. However, with recent off-the-field changes and stricter measures put in by the new board, there's hope for a better new season all around. We've received some signals, expressions of interest, but uh, we, we still have uh, that um, sponsorship deal with uh, the GCL, which comes to an end uh, at the end of this year. Fiji Sevens has a new coach in Ben Ryan. Fifteens Rugby will be seeing more test matches, the Fijiana Sevens team have been invited to the Dubai and China Sevens, while schools rugby is establishing better development pathways. Progress is in the air at Rugby House, and let's hope it's maintained. Elena McDonald, FBC Sports. And good news for the Vodafone Fiji Mbati side today after star duo John Sutton and Aquila Uwate put their hands up to represent the country for the Rugby League World Cup. After seeing their respective NRL sides crash out of the semi-finals over the weekend, Sutton and Uwate will now strengthen our national team at the tournament. Uh, late yesterday, uh, Vodafone Fiji Mbati head coach uh, Rick Stone 
uh, he finally uh, released the names of the last three players that uh, will be joining the Vodafone Fiji Party to the Rugby League World Cup. Uh, that is John Sutton, Akuelo Wate and uh, Penny Botiki. Uh, so those uh, three players finally make up the 24-player uh, squad that will be representing Fiji at the Rugby League World Cup in England. Final preparations are underway for the upcoming Courts Inter-District Championship. Indra Singh has the details. A little over a week remains for the start of the biggest football tournament of the year. The Courts Inter-District Championships is always the cauldron of the football calendar and nothing less is expected in 2013. The Courts IDC will be a crack of a tournament. Uh, people do gear up for it and they all come down together. This is the first time the whole family of Fiji football comes together for one tournament and uh, this is something that everyone looks forward to, we look forward to it, the fans look forward for it and whether they come from any small district in the country, they are represented here and this is something they can cheer for their districts. Coupled with this, it being the 75th anniversary for Fiji FA, the parent body is working on making this a memorable year. Hence, there are a number of activities apart from games lined up for the spectators. Platinum Carnival, we have launched it on the 5th to the 12th, and we'll be launching also the history book of Fiji FA that will be on sale, and people can get the history of Fiji FA for the 75 years of sports that PGFA has control in this country. Already teams are gearing up with the last stretch of preparations now underway. Sides such as Suva have moved camp to the west while Top Bets Bar having just returned back from New Zealand. Rubbing their hands in glee and waiting to lift the Lloyd Fairbrother trophy is what all teams are now gearing up for. Interesting, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, the Fiji Football Association says they will only allow foreign players with valid work permits to play in the tournament. This being the last time foreign players can feature for local teams, no last-minute additions will be allowed. Only those Im imports who had sorted out their paperwork during the Battle of the Giants can feature in the tournament. Cricket Fiji has plans to construct a cricket pitch at Queen Victoria School by next month. This is part of the efforts to develop the sport and increase their player base. The project is expected to be completed in two weeks' time. Yeah, uh, with uh, coming to the school, the work is scheduled to start after next week and uh, hopefully once we get that done, we can uh, uh, open it with the EPL, one of the EPL games. To, uh, uh, we are, we're, we're moving in that direction because of the schools and also the development. Cricket Fiji officials are also hoping to use the venue to host a couple of elite player league games next month. That's it from Sports Tonight. It's back to Jackie now with business. Trade Pacifica, which will showcase products and services from different companies across the Pacific, will cost around $800,000. Chanel Sivan reports the Trade Expo will offer businesses the opportunity to explore trade needs for their development and growth. The focus for the 2014 Trade Pacifica Expo will be women, businesses and students. Chair of the Trade Pacifica Steering Committee, Kaliopate Tavola, says the three-day event will market Fiji in the Pacific region. The benefit that we are trying to generate uh, will go beyond just the, um, the corporate people, the business people. Uh, we want the public uh, and particularly uh, the students. Um, Women in business, there's a particular focus uh, of Trade Pacifica 2014 uh, and we want to give a lot of focus on, on women uh, in business. The expo is funded by participating members. Those who are exporting, those who are prospective exporters uh, and particularly the women in business, uh, small, medium enterprises, uh, large operators, they all be um, qualifying to be part of Trade Pacifica. 2014 and of course uh, we want to bring in the buyers. ANZ is the new member to the expo and today sponsored a sum of $50,000. Fiji's pro uh, growth forecast has been revised to 3.2 percent and I think there is a, there's a fair degree of optimism about the prospects of that country so all in all I think uh, uh, from where I sit I see the future goes well for the region. The Trade Expo will be held from the 2nd to the 4th of April at the Vodafone Arena in Suva next year. Shanal Shivan, FBC News.
for the time now, and it's Monday, Jen. What do you have for us? Well, Jackie, it was an incredibly beautiful day for Fiji. Everybody enjoyed sunshiny weather today, including Suva. Now, the weather report says it was cloudy in Savasavu, but aside from that, it was the perfect start to the week. Temperatures see both Suva and the Hidden Paradise on 28, which is also the day's lowest temperature. Pai and Lambasa were both on 31 degrees, which is the highest. Tomorrow's weather sees wonderfully fine conditions again, apart from brief showers about the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands. We also have some rather cool nights to look forward to. Picture of the day, and this was sent in by Shakti Gounder of Suva. Taken at Savasavu, you could be forgiven if you're left speechless by this charming town in the north. And here's a fact about nearby Natewa Bay. It's the biggest bay in the southern hemisphere. That was weather. Have a great evening. Thanks so much for that, Genevieve. The headlines again. A duo face court for allegedly defrauding Education Ministry of about $60,000. NFA proposes the criminalization of unnecessary fires and more opportunities identified for Fiji-China trade. Now for the results of last week's poll question and we ask, is Ben Ryan the right choice for Fiji 7s? 81% of you said yes. This week's question is, can Fiji defend its Gold Coast 7s title? Visit the FBC website to take part. Remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. Until tomorrow, good night. Nimbula, why you Mr. Ben? And Lapa! Now, Maggie Kiro Manolo can do the Vima Taka Money Chicken of a Rumbuka and a Bula FM. Now, we do a shilling. Nisambula Vinaka, Oya Wane Kamanalani, or Nina Dorum with Yao, when a Viva Kinaru and a Visinga, when a Money Tikina Bogarumbuka and a Radio Fiji One and Domi Viti Bongani Vianu. Nama Catalan and a being on a Sassivian and a Tinakalo and a being born in Ibukilulu. Can a Viva Manualu and a being born in Ibakaroa, Menambuza Nivalu, Ninga Namaka.